Okay, now Matthew 6.14. Now I'm going to use this passage as an example here. For if we, you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Now here is a message about forgiveness. And then we want to motivate people with God's grace. First we want to interpret the passage. So the passage says, if we forgive men their trespasses, if they sin against us, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. So it's very clear that if we forgive other people, God is happy with us and He'll forgive us also. But if we do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So this is the warning. The warning. Whenever we read in the Bible about consequences, bad consequences, punishments, that those are the warnings. That's the law. Now the law has different functions. The law also teaches us to obey. That's the green part, forgive. Now you notice I use three colors here. The red is like the blood of Jesus. It's what God does to us, the grace of God. The Father will also forgive you. So that is the grace of God. And then the green part is what we should do, obey. And then the punishment part, the warning part is the blue part. Do, if we don't forgive other people, neither will our Father in heaven forgive us our trespasses. So this is the warning. Now I have marked my Bible like that. Uh, so I'm used to, whenever I see any statement, I immediately I can tell whether it's the law statement it's a warning statement or instruction statement. And that's why when I read a number of assignments, I noticed that very often they just tell people, you do this, do that, do this, and then Jesus forgive you, so you do this, do that. So it's, it's just briefly about Jesus' forgiveness, and then you do this, do that. It's always telling people what to do. But you notice that I'm telling people that for every action, God give us the motivation to obey. God give us the promises to encourage us to obey. Now some of the encouragement is obvious. In this passage it's obvious, but there are some motivation that is hidden, even in this passage too, that I, go, I will show you later how there are some more motivation. Okay. Now if we teach like this, if we have a group of people who are, who really believe that God has everything in His hand, everything is in God's hand, everything we come across in our life is in His hand, my whole life is in His hand, my health, my life, my provision, my wisdom, my opportunities to serve God, all these are in God's hand. I know that my whole life is in God's hand. Whenever I obey Him, God is very happy with me and He will bless me. And my whole life will be blessed. And I know that I cannot run away from God. Whenever, whenever I do anything good, God is very happy. But if I don't obey, if I am not faithful, then God sees that. And any way we sin, any sin we commit, that sin will have consequence. Now some people say, well that it will give me pressure. Uh, people say, I have different kinds of sin, how can I have no sins? Then we'll say, we understand sins are destructive. Whenever we have any sin, then we'll say, Lord, I know that sins are destructive, therefore please help me, forgive me, and give me strength to overcome the sin. And then. When we understand how serious the sin is, then we can overcome the sin. Now here, the strength to overcome unforgiveness is realizing that if we don't forgive other people, God will not forgive us also. And if God doesn't forgive us, we'll go to hell. Now if we totally don't forgive people, now we're not saved by forgiving other people, we're saved by grace through faith. But when we are saved, we will forgive people. 
But if a person doesn't forgive people at all, he doesn't want to forgive people at all. He always holds grudges. He always complains about other people. He always gossip and say bad things about other people. There might be something wrong with his spiritual life. And he can face the punishment of God and that is terrible. Now that is the warning part. But as a mature Christian, we should not be motivated only by the warning part. As a mature Christian, we should say, God is so full of blessings. So I hope we all believe that. God is so full of blessings, all kinds of blessings. Count all the blessings we have. All the blessings came from God. He has so many blessings. He has poured so many blessings into our lives. So when I obey Him, He is very, very happy. He will bless me. He will strengthen me. He will use me. Therefore, I want to obey Him. Therefore, I want to follow Him. I want to do what God wants me to do. I want to obey Him totally. Then God is very, very happy with me. And He will and he'll bless me. <clears throat> okay, so we should be filled with we should be filled with positive motivation. We should be filled with the grace of God. God is blessing me. God is pouring His blessings upon me. God has all kinds of blessings He wants to pour into my life. God is full of mercy and kindness. Therefore, I want to obey God. I want to follow God. I want to obey God and God will bless me. So that, that should be the positive motivation. We should not be uh, motivated only by warning okay now okay let's go through this um, so that in, we just went through the interpretation and then the grace of God uh, okay negative and positive examples of people the negative examples is that uh, wait let me turn on <coughs> Okay, I'm turning on my cell phone. I forgot to plug in the power there. But now I'm going to turn it on again. Okay, now, um, so this passage the interpretation is that when we forgive men their sins, then the Heavenly Father will also forgive us. But if we do not forgive men their trespasses, the Heavenly Father will also will not forgive our trespasses. So now, with other passages from the Bible, we know that we're not saved by forgiving other people, okay? We're not saved by good works. The way to receive salvation is not by forgiving other people. It's by trusting in Jesus' salvation. But when we trust in Jesus' salvation, we'll have the fruit of forgiveness. If a person have zero, has zero uh, forgiveness, there's something wrong with his faith. Then he, his faith is dead and he might not have salvation. So we're not saved by forgiving other people, but we're saved by, we're saved by uh, trusting in Jesus as our Savior. But when we are saved, we want to forgive people. So. Those people who don't forgive at all, they have problem with their spiritual life. So that's the interpretation of the passage. And then examples of negative examples of people. There are some people who just, uh, even Christians, among Christians, they hold grudges against other people. They say, this person has said that to me, and my spouse has said that to me, and I'm very angry. I cannot forgive him or her. I, uh, I. I, I don't like this minister because he has said that to me. So people hold grudges against other people. And uh, so, and, and they cannot forgive other people. So it does happen. 
there are Christians who don't forgive other people it does happen it's dangerous it's dangerous and then positive examples there are Christians who forgive other people like for instance I heard the first missionary to Korea that his son was killed but he blessed those people who kill his he protected the people who kill his son and then the Koreans saw this and then they uh, they believe in uh, Jesus I think this is a revival story it's about a Korean man his uh, uh, pastor his son was killed but then he uh, he he uh, he took the killer of his son he received the killer of his son into his home to treat him nicely and that changed this man and this man became a person who brought revival to Korea so people who forgive other people really bring influence to other people they can have great influence on other people's spiritual life okay God's nature and grace God is a forgiving God God is a righteous God God cannot stand any kind of sin but he is full of forgiveness his nature is forgiveness he wants to forgive people but he cannot just say I forgive you he because he's righteous also he he has two nature he is full of love mercy and kindness he also is full of righteousness and justice he cannot just forgive people the only way he can forgive people is to send his son Jesus Christ to die for our sins so that the sins are paid for then God can forgive us God cannot just say I forgive you God has to pay for the penalty of the sin in some way and the way is to send his son to die for us now that is the nature of God he he wants to forgive us that's why he really try his best to find the most extraordinary way to give us salvation he has the nature of forgiveness he's a forgiving God therefore any time now when we come to him we can be sure that God is a forgiving God when we say to Lord to the Lord I'm very sorry for my sin God is a forgiving God so we can describe God now why do we describe the nature of God to people because when people understand God's nature they will like God more they will appreciate God more they will say God is so wonderful I want to believe in God that that they see that God is a God a good God so God is a forgiving God okay so what does he do what does what did Jesus do what did God do God sent Jesus Christ to die for us to forgive us and also after we became a Christian we sinned many times even today have we sinned have we had some negative thoughts some worry some doubts some negative thoughts any kind of negative thoughts any kind of lust is sin every day we have sins we don't you know we're not perfect so every day we need the forgiveness of God and God is willing to forgive us so that is the wonderful thing about God so whenever we are sorry for our sins God will forgive us for sure so God continue to forgive us and then whenever we have any kind of sin God will continue to work in our heart to move us to repentance to move us to trust in Jesus Christ as a Savior so God did a number of things <clears throat> now first God has a nature of forgiveness God sent his son to die for us and then he sent the Holy Spirit to move in our heart so that we'll repent and he accepts us in the process he did not yell at us and kick us in the process now as human being <clears throat> many parents when they see the children commit some serious crime they will first yell at the children and they hit them and they hate them but God doesn't do that when we sin God first come to forgive us it's like the prodigal son when he came home he had nothing good but the father saw him and had compassion and ran up to him and hugged him and kissed him and then gave him the few gifts so that's how Heavenly Father is 
in the process of bringing us to repentance he already has a forgiving heart actually in Jesus Christ he has forgiven all people but whether the point is whether the people has accepted his forgiveness God has forgiven all people through the death of Jesus Christ he has paid for the penalty of all our sins but we need to trust in Jesus as our Savior to receive the forgiveness. But in God's heart, He already has forgiven us. But the forgiveness will not come to us until we repent <coughs> and trust in God's forgiveness. <coughs> <coughs> when we repent and trust in God for forgiveness, then he'll, the forgiveness will come to us. But the forgiveness actually happened on the cross. It has happened on the cross. Already all the sins are paid for. So in the process, God forgives us and He moves our heart to repentance even when we are sinners. There are many, many people who fell into serious sins. Many people drank a lot. They became an alcoholic. They become a drug, drug addict. They, they have different women. They uh, commit adultery, they commit all kinds of sins, but still God continued moving the heart. God did not wait for them to repent before God blessed them. God continued to work in the heart, to bring repentance in the heart. Until one day they repent and then they receive the forgiveness into their lives. So God works in our life to create a repentance in the heart and then changes our heart. And not only changes our heart, but He also motivates us to forgive other people. And then whenever we forgive other people, He will be very happy and He will forgive us. So these are the few points of His grace. He sent Jesus Christ to die for us. He has the nature of forgiveness. And He found a way by sending Jesus to die for us. And He sent the Holy Spirit to move in our heart, to move us to repentance. And in the process, before we repent, when God is working in our heart, God is already has a forgiving spirit. God is already moving us to come to Him. God is already feeling sorry for us. God is already having compassion on us. God doesn't wait for us to repent before He has compassion. He already has compassion for us in the process. So He already has forgiveness. It's just that we have not for received the forgiveness until we repent and trust in Jesus as our Savior. But before we trust in Jesus as our Savior, God already has this heart of forgiveness toward us. And He has a heart of compassion to move us to repentance. And then when we repent, God is very happy. The whole heaven rejoices. And then He also moves us to, to forgive other people. And then when we forgive other people, God is very, very, very happy. And God will reward us richly. He'll give us a free spirit, a joyful spirit when we forgive other people. So that's the areas of God's grace. But why do people, now let me show you the, uh, the outline here again. Why do people don't forgive? Because people like to always think about the bad things of other people. Many people talk like that. They always say, Oh, these people mistreated me, the other person mistreated me, this person yelled at me, oh, they, uh, uh, this person did terrible things to me. They always remember the bad things they did, other people did to them, but they don't remember the bad things they did to other people. So many people hold grudges and they cannot forgive. And many people just count what, how people treat them instead of counting how they treat other people. Okay, and then warning. The warning is that if we don't forgive people, then God will also not forgive us. So how? <clears throat> First, we need to receive the forgiveness and then we forgive other people. First, trust that God is a forgiving God. Before we repent, God already has a forgiving heart. Jesus has already paid for all our sins before we ask Him to forgive us. He has already paid for all our sins. So whenever we ask Him to forgive us, God for sure will forgive us. Now God is different from people because people is not like that. People very often, people will only wait for people to repent and then really show enough repentance and then they will start to change. 
people is different from God. God is not like that. God already has the heart of forgiveness before we repent. God already has a heart of compassion before we repent. So, uh, so we understand God's full of compassion. He's full of forgiveness. Therefore, we hold on to Jesus' forgiveness. We say, when I repent of my sin, then you're very, very happy and you, re you forgive me and you're very, very happy. You for sure bless me. I'm so happy that you bless me. I'm so happy that you continue to bless me and you will for sure accept me. And I appreciate that very much because without the forgiveness of God, I will end up in hell. And then, uh, how do we learn to forgive other people? We think of how many times you have sinned against God. Every day we have sinned many, many times. But people sin against us not every day. Not every day do people sin against us. Some people hurt us, but not every day. But we sin against God every day. So we think of how many times we have sinned against God, but still God forgive us. So we say, Lord, these people, they have sinned against me, but I've sinned against you more. So please help me to have compassion on these people. And, and uh, also, these people have been hurt by other people. They've been hurt since childhood. They've been hurt by other people. Therefore, they only know how to hurt people. And therefore, they habitually hurt people. So I don't have to be con uh, affected by them. And I, I can have compassion on them. These people are miserable. They are suffering. They are in pain. So I have compassion on them and I want to forgive them. And I want to pray for them. I want, to, I want them to receive the blessings of God. I want to hug them. I want to hold them. I want to give them gifts to let them know that I forgive them. I love them. I care about them. So I ask God for strength so that I have the courage to put down my pride put down my unforgiveness and really approach a person and say first, if I've done anything against you, please forgive me. If I've done anything that I wrong you, please forgive me. And uh, give me, forgive me and I'm willing to have a good relationship with you. So any, any way we have, we have done anything wrong against a person, we ask for forgiveness first and then we forgive the person. And God is very, very happy. God will clap hands at you and say, you're a good child. I'm very happy with you. You're a good child and I'll bless your whole life. So I hope this, you understand that how I encourage people to forgive. I don't just say you have to forgive. You know, I've received so many assignments that people just say, okay, God forgives you, therefore you do this, do that. So I hope that you always name the grace of God in that area, related to the area. Now here forgiveness, then we name God's nature and grace related to forgiveness. How He has the heart of forgiveness. How He forgave us all already on the cross. How all the sins have been paid for. How Jesus prayed for those people before they, they repent to Jesus. When Jesus was on the cross, He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they've done. Jesus already prayed for them before they pray for forgiveness. So God will pray for us before we repent of our sins. That's how God is, how God is a forgiving God. Therefore, when we repent, He is very, very happy. And then when we think of people, they have hurt us, and these people, they have been hurt by other people so many times, therefore they only know how to hurt people. So they're miserable, they are suffering, therefore we want to forgive them. Okay? So I hope that you understand that for any message, <coughs> any message, we want the grace of God to relate. Now every point relate to the point, to relate to the theme. It's very, very important. Every point related to the theme. Now just now forgiveness, the interpretation of the passage about the forgiveness, example of people don't forgive and do forgive, and God's nature and grace related to forgiveness, and why people don't forgive, and why some people forgive, and, and then reminder and warning. 
if we don't forgive and how to forgive how to have compassion on people how to receive God's forgiveness now if we talk about joy then rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice if we use this passage then the passage says that rejoice in the Lord in Jesus Christ we can rejoice and examples many Christians don't have joy because they are heavy on themselves they use the law they say I have not done well they just look at what they've not, not done well and then they feel very bad about themselves then they are just uh, giving pressure to themselves and then God's nature and grace God is full of joy when one sinner repent the whole heaven rejoice so the heaven is a place of joy God is a God of joy uh, the angels and the people in heaven are full of joy and when Jesus saves us when Jesus comes in our life and the Holy Spirit comes in our life he brings joy many people when they believe in Jesus they feel joy Jesus forgives their sins and they feel joy and they feel relief of their burdens and they feel joyful they, uh, and then God will continue to give joy to them especially when they praise God and worship God and count the blessings of God then God will give them joy so that's the nature of God so we want to talk about the nature of God and grace God's grace related to the theme okay the theme is joy then how God give us joy how God takes away our worry and very often we can talk about the opposite the opposite of joy is worry burdens so we can talk about the burdens and the worries of people take away the joy so we in God we know that God will take care of our problems so we don't want to worry about people we don't want to worry about future we don't want to worry about things we don't want to worry about what people did to us we want to think about the good things God has done to us so we can rejoice in the Lord so God is full of joy and he works in our hearts so that we can have joy actually God want all Christians to be joyful but many Christians don't live in joy many Christians live in pain and pressure and why people don't live in joy because they count the negative things they have they count the bad things of people and reminder and warning if people don't have joy they are burdened they have don't, no strength and it's hard to live a Christian life without joy if a Christian just live under pressure it's always responsibility it's a lot of pressure how to have joy then we need to take care of the burdens okay the things we worry about actually God will take care of those things we don't have to worry God is almighty God cares about us he will help us even though the difficulties might not go away immediately but God will help us eventually so we just trust in God God will open the way for me so I don't have to worry so put down the worry put down the burdens whenever we are worried we come to God and say Lord you will take care of the things for me so I don't have to worry and then we count the blessings of God we rejoice in the Lord and when, the, when we rejoice and we feel joyful we say God you're so good you give me joy and then we thank God for that the more we thank God the more we have joy and then we also learn to take care of different problems that cause us to take away our joy that if we have problems with people we want to take care of the problem with people so that we can have joy with people if we have problems in the church we want to take care of the problems in the church so that we can have joy in the church so every point should relate to the theme 